Alright, so here I have some gold that I refined. And you can see it. It's a brown powder. It clumps up nicely in the water. And falls to a nice pile. But, to get this 99.99 .99 pure, what we need to do is refine it a second time. To get rid of any other possible metals that may be present. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drain off this water and show you the process. Alright, so we have the majority of the water drained. I'm going to go ahead and add about, well, let's start with 50 milliliters of hydrochloric acid, which in stores is called muriatic acid. Okay, actually we'll, we'll make it 75 milliliters. There we go. Now this shouldn't cause any type of reaction with pure gold. You can see there is some brown stuff floating around. But then you can also see it's just settling. It's just gold that I disturbed by doing that. No color change. So that's a good indication. Okay, so I have my gold and the hydrochloric acid. Now we need to start adding our nitric acid. This is 67%. What I went ahead and did was poured some into this little vial here, so I can uh, add it incrementally. Now the thing with dissolving gold in aqua regia, which is the combination of these two acids, is you want to use as little nitric as possible. You want to use just enough to dissolve the gold, but not too much, because on the next step after uh, boiling it down, any excess free nitric acid is going to make it impossible to drop the gold out of solution because it's just going to re-dissolve. So let's add a few drops here. Add just a tad bit more. And we'll let the reaction take place. Keep our eye on it. We'll probably have to add more nitric. But we'll just go from there. You can see after just a few seconds of dropping the nitric acid in, it's attacking the gold. And it's turning the solution a nice yellow color. It's kind of cool because, you know, gold as a metal form is yellow. And in liquid form dissolved in aqua regia, it's also yellow. So I added a few more drops of the, the nitric acid. And you can see it picked up the reaction a little bit, but it slowed down in the last probably two minutes. So it's probably going to need more. That's why you add it incrementally though. So you don't add too much at once, like I mentioned earlier on about the excess free nitric. So we'll go ahead and add just a tad bit more. We'll do one more, one more shot, and what I mean by shot is dropper. And you should watch it pick back up. And this is no longer aqua regia at this point, because there is gold in solution. So it becomes chlorauric acid. Yeah, see that picked up the reaction quite a bit. Alright, so there is nothing going on anymore. There is no more reaction. And there is a very beautiful yellow color to it. Uh, if it's not very green, it's, it's mostly yellow. Which would indicate that it's pretty much pure chlorauric acid, except for the salts that are in there. Uh, I'd guess that's probably lead, but we're going to filter that out and move on to the next step. Now, uh, I put a coffee filter in this funnel. It's kind of out of the camera. You can't really see it. There's a coffee filter in there, folded a couple times. We will take our chlorauric acid and dump it into our funnel. At this point, we can grab our spray bottle that you should have ready with uh, distilled water and has been flushed with distilled water a good few times. Spray out anything that could be in the, in the glass jar. Because ultimately, I'm going to use the same, the same measuring cup to heat up and evaporate everything else. 
Once that's rinsed out, we're going to spray our filter too. That way there's nothing left in the filter, it'll all kind of run through into the rest of our stuff. Now here you can see our uh, chlorooric acid slightly diluted with water. It is somewhat cloudy. Let me see if I can pick this up with my hand behind it so you can see. It looks more cloudy on camera than it does in person. But I believe that's due to the fact that the spray bottle I used after I mentioned washing out very well with distilled water and flushing it through very well to make sure you have pure distilled water, I think there might have still been some tap water inside of it. So I'm gonna have this little bit of cloudiness. It shouldn't affect the purity of the gold though. Yeah, see, there you can see it's not quite as cloudy as you think. Here's our chlorooric acid, fully filtered and ready for some heat. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna heat this up until it's about a sludge, kind of not completely dry to where it's popping and spitting everywhere because then we're gonna lose gold. But we're just gonna heat it up until it's pretty much no liquid but just a sludge and we'll work from it from there. While it's evaporating under heat, I thought I'd mention that the uh, chlorooric acid did uh, clear up and it's completely translucent now. Okay, we have skipped along to the next step, and you can see it is fully dried. I actually didn't want this dry, but after turning to a sludge and letting it sit for about half an hour, it dried up fully. Which is okay, because it didn't splatter out of the dish. You can see there is uh, some lines along the side, where well, there is still some there. We're going to rehydrate that with distilled water. It has to be distilled water, not tap water. Right there is about good. And we'll take our stir rod. get everything dissolved as best as we can. Alright, so I'm pretty sure everything is dissolved. I'm going to add a little bit more water. I'm actually going to pick this up and tilt it so I don't splash it. Right about there. And we're going to stir that in. And let it be uh, a consistent solution here. And because this gold should be very pure, we're going to drop it with sodium emitted by sulfite. So this is the second run, it should be absolutely no problem with this drop. I'll go ahead and just put a pinch in there. Brown color. Okay, I have a piece of chunk in my hand. We'll, we'll just drop some powder in there. Okay, now we're getting a drop. Right, let's throw this around. There it is. There's our gold drop. All that brown powder being formed is pure gold. Oh, 
I'm gonna let this sit for about five minutes and then I'm gonna show you what it looks like after that if it's all settled then it's a good drop and there's a lot of pure gold in there all right so I said a few minutes but it's actually been overnight the gold with the sodium metabisulfite was taking forever to drop it was suspended in solution but wasn't going to the bottom so I actually used a little bit of iron sulfate in there just a little pinch of it and then dropped all my gold right to the bottom you can see there is some gold kind of sitting on the surface which is pretty normal especially with the iron sulfate and there in the middle is all our gold powder and the solution turned really clear as you can see too let's throw this around you can see it all just goes right nicely to the middle now what I'm going to do is just go ahead and filter this off and save our gold in the bottom and there will be our 24 karat gold so there it is with the solution poured off nice uh, kind of brown mud and there's one last step before I'm done with this before melting is we're gonna wash it with just some distilled water and then dry it and we're ready to melt it all right so I made this little crucible or melting dish earlier and I'm gonna go ahead and season it with some borax the first what I want to do is uh, I've already baked it in the oven but I want to gently heat it get it to a nice temperature and drop some borax on there All right, it should be at about a warm enough temperature now after a few minutes. This is just a propane torch. I'll go ahead and take some borax. Get it nice and hot in the middle there. Drop it right in. And we need just a little bit more heat here. Alright, so we managed to get it all into the crucible, all of our gold. We're going to put this heat on pretty low here. Ever so gently heat this up so we can get some of these small particles to kind of clump together a little bit. That way we don't burn it or blow it away with the torch. Turn the torch just a little bit here. You know, I haven't even really fully started melting it yet. Oh, actually, no, some of it's melting down now. I'm starting to see some gold color. Let me turn the uh, flash off my camera real fast, and we'll continue this. Okay, we're back with no flash. It, it seemed like it made it harder to see. All our gold's already uh, kind of shrinking down here. taking the heat nicely
I think it's about time that we can turn up this heat. I only have a split second of filming here. You can't really see it on camera anyways, but it's into a bead now. So I'm gonna take it off the heat. So the question is now, was all that work worth it? Here's the piece I ended up getting out of there. This weighs 2.48 grams. And uh, I would consider it was worth the work. Because I actually brought, this came out of a necklace, all that work did. All, the, all this gold. Uh, I actually brought the necklace into a pawn shop. They told me the necklace was gold plated. And they, they did an acid test on it. I'm not sure what type of acid they dropped on it. It looked like maybe nitric or something. And they told me that it, it reacted poorly and it was maybe gold plated and they would offer me 50 cents for it. Now this piece which is 2.48 grams uh, on spot price that is $103 today. So would I take 50 cents or would I take $103? I think I would say it was worth all that work. Plus I got a nice pretty little piece of gold out of it.